So today we are doing a full video breakdown of M1 Finance, the investing app. We're gonna talk about all the different features, how to set things up so that way your account is up and running and working just perfectly. Now, what we're gonna actually go ahead and do is hop onto the computer in real time. So this is gonna actually be on the desktop version while we go through this, but a lot of these features and things that you need to do to set up are gonna be very similar on the mobile version. Now, while we go through this whole thing, if you are gonna need to sign up for M1 Finance, I will actually link it up in the show notes down below. That does help support out the channel so you get free content just like this. But if you're somebody who's already signed up for M1 Finance but still wanna support us, there's also gonna be that thanks button on the uh, video itself that you can actually go ahead and financially support us so we can continue to provide content just like this for everybody. So first and foremost, this is just gonna be an overview view uh, right here of what our M1 Finance account looks like. So you can see we have slices, we have different categories, and we have a whole bunch of our account up and running. First thing we actually want to talk about here today is the different type of M1 Finance accounts you can actually open up. You can see over here, the very first one is going to be the individual investing account. This is a taxable brokerage account, most common one that most people will probably go through and open up. Next up is going to be a joint investing account. This is if you have a partner and you want to both have access to this account. You can also add somebody as a beneficiary later, and we can talk about that. And then you can see here the next one up is going to be a retirement account. This can be a traditional, a Roth, a SEP if you are a small business, or you can also even roll over a traditional 401k from an old business that you might have worked for. You can also open up a trust account as well. And then um, you can also do a custodial account. So if you want somebody to get started when they're under 18 years old, you can actually create a custodial account. Now you're gonna see a special symbol on here saying M1 Plus. And this is gonna be something we're gonna talk about here in just a moment, because this is an additional feature that you can utilize when it comes to using M1 Finance. Because if you don't already know, M1 Finance is a completely free platform to utilize when it comes to investing into the stock market, whether it's with individual stocks or with ETFs. And so if you wanna get some extra features, there is a version that you can pay for, similar to like a premium edition of the service. Now I mentioned M1 Plus being a premium service. This is what this is going to entail for anyone that wants to go ahead and go through that process. First and foremost, they have a borrow feature, which we will get into later. And you can actually borrow against your investing platform for a lower rate than everybody else that doesn't have this service. You can also earn money through the M1 spend account, which again, we'll also break down here in just a moment, and you'll get a nice interest on that money. And then you're gonna also be able to trade at multiple times a day versus once per day on the free version of the app. And then you also have access to smart transfers, which again, we'll go into a little bit more, but it'll give you the ability to have your money moving a little bit more efficiently for you based off of the things that you want it to be doing. As well as if you end up going with their M1 credit card, that'll actually waive the annual fee for you if you already have the M1 Plus. Now, as of recording this video, M1 Plus is $149 a year when it comes to paying for the premium version. A lot of times when you sign up for the free version of M1 Finance, they do offer you either like half price or sometimes even a couple of months for free to just test out the service. Highly recommended if you get access to a free portion of M1 Plus. Now, the first thing when it comes to creating your account, you are gonna go through the step-by-step -step process of putting in your personal information, which will include first and last name, home address, and your social security number, as well as date of birth. Of course, these are all things that are gonna be required by law to be able to go through and open up an investing account. Now, when you go through that, it will ask you to add a bank account. So I don't have access to show you directly, but I just logged into this portion of it to show you that the way they're gonna go through the process of verifying your bank is actually through uh, either one of two ways. You could do a micro deposit, which will throw small amounts into your regular bank account. So you can verify that the banks are gonna be connected by putting in the routing number and account number, and then verify the bank once everything gets deposited into that account or using Plaid, which is a service that will allow you to connect your personal bank instantaneously and have it connected right away, which is what I did when I went through the sign up process as well. So you can see right over here, those are the two ways and you can go ahead and do that while you sign up for M1 Finance, which will just be the only bank account you can have on file. So keep that in mind. If you do end up wanting to change out your bank down the road, you can send an email out to M1 Finance to go ahead and switch out different bank accounts if you wanna go ahead and do that. But 
But as of right now, with this recording, you can only have one bank on file for M1 Finance. So one of the most unique features when it comes to M1 Finance is being able to create these slices of pies right over here. So that way you can have different types of stocks or ETFs into different sections if you want to, or you can have them all together, whichever way you want to go. But for a lot of people, they like to split things up like this. So that way they can keep things organized and looking great. So the way we're going to do this is go ahead and create our pie. Now our pies can include anywhere from one to whatever number of uh, stocks we want. I believe the max in your portfolio can be up to a hundred. So keeping that in mind, if you want to go with a higher number, you might have to create multiple pies. But right over here, as an example, in our growth section, uh, we actually have four stocks. In our retail section here, we have three stocks. And if we go into our tech, we have two and so on and so forth. So we have a limited amount in each slice to help keep things manageable and help us go through the process of having everything the way we want it long-term without having to pay attention on a day-to-day. -day. So how do we go ahead and create these pies? Well, the thing we want to do is actually go into our research section, which is going to be towards the top page here. So we're going to click here, and this is going to get us a whole new section of M1 Finance that we not seen before. So the first section here is with news. Uh, next up is going to be the stocks that we can choose from, then the ETFs and funds that we can choose from. They also now have crypto, which is very new, and we haven't talked about that yet, uh, but it is going to be there. Then we have a section called My Pies. This is where we're going to want to go into. And then we're going to look at Expert Pies here in just a little bit, as well as creating a wait list with stocks that we are interested in and want to pay attention to. So let's go ahead and click on My Pies. And you can see here, I actually already have some that are used and in, uh, in stocks and funds account. And then I have some that are uh, not actually used, but I had created before and I can add to my portfolio. But we're not going to add those yet because I want to show you how to go ahead and build one. So right here, it says build a stock and fund pie. So we're going to click here and this is going to be the page that opens up for us. So how do we go through and create this pie? First, we want to name the pie. Uh, if we want to say food, right? So we're going to add food companies in here. So food, uh, you can put emojis in there if you want, like I've done before. You can add descriptions in here. So we can do, you know, fast food. Uh, if you want to go ahead and add any details on there. So once we have all that in there, now what we're going to want to do is add some slices, which are essentially different stocks or funds. So you can see right over here where it says add slices or slice, I should say. We're going to click on here. And it's actually going to take us to this page where we can go ahead and choose different stocks. Uh, up towards the left, we can click on funds instead if we wanted to do ETFs. Um, and so what we're going to do is look at the different companies. We can go ahead and start searching. It usually starts with the market cap first. So you see Apple and Microsoft at the top. On the left side here, you can actually see a bunch of different filters based off of things that maybe you are looking for. If this is not really your expertise here, don't worry so much about the filters if you don't want to. Um, you can see the different sectors as well too, just to kind of keep in mind. But if you're somebody like myself who already knows what we're going to be adding into this uh, pie here, what we're going to actually want to do is just go ahead and go to the search section over here. We can either go by symbol, if you know the symbol for the company, or you can just type in the company name. And because I am very hungry for some Chipotle, we're gonna go ahead and put Chipotle down. So I just started typing in Chipotle and it started coming up so we can click here. And it takes us to pretty much the information page for Chipotle. You'll see a lot of data points like the graph, you'll see uh, some of the price point right here, the market cap, PE ratio, and some of the other important information to note when it comes to this company, as well as some news towards the bottom here. So that's always good information to have. If you want to go in depth with them, sometimes I recommend outside sources like seekingalpha.com is a great website. So let's go ahead and add Chipotle to our basket. So you're going to see this option right here. We're going to go ahead and click on there. And now you can see it says remove from basket, which at the bottom of the screen will have Chipotle. So it shows that we're building our pie. So next up, let's go ahead and do Domino's. Because again, we're doing food companies here and I'm getting really, really hungry. So we're going to go ahead and add this one also to the basket. And then we can also do, let's say, Wendy's. Let's say we're super into Wendy's. And again, we're going to go ahead and add to basket. So you can see them piling up at the bottom of the screen right over here. Um, I'm going to put my arrow so you can see here. So they're adding up together. Now, I'm a little bit in the way here, but there is an add button right over here, right next to my icon, or my screen here. But it just says add, A-D-D. -D. And so if these are the companies I want to add, let's say I can do more in the future. That's totally cool. But for today, I just want these three companies. We're going to click on that add. And then you're going to come back to this original page where we put in the name of the pie. Now, what this does automatically for us is pretty much breaks them down into an even amount based off of how many companies we added. So if we did four, they would be broken down to 25% a piece. Now I choose to want to have these as different targets. And what this actually does for us is allow us to have a certain 
amount of our overall portfolio dedicated to each of these stocks as well as to each of these pies. So for us, as an example with Chipotle, maybe I want Chipotle to be 50% of this pie. Uh, you can see right over here, it says I have to remove 16% uh, to get to 100 because that's what is the max. I, max for any pie can be 100% of the pie. So I have to go ahead and lower these other two. I can choose whichever amount I want. Maybe Wendy's I only want to be 15%. Uh, which then drops it back up here to say I had to add 9% back to get to 100. So I'm gonna go ahead and add that to Domino's. So if this looks good for me, you can see on this uh, pie section over here, it kind of gives you a visual showing that Chipotle takes up half, Domino's takes up 35%, and then Wendy's would take up 15%. If this looks good, I can click on continue at the top here. Now, one thing I really wanna stress out here is that you can change these numbers day in and day out, multiple times a day if you want to. It doesn't actually affect anything, and we'll go over that a little bit more too. But if you if, if this looks good for now, you can go ahead and hit continue, and then it'll take you back to this page that we were at earlier. So if I scroll down here, because it's not in my account currently, I technically already had one food um, thing added, but this one is the fast food one because we created that here. Um, there's an option here that says add to portfolio. Now, if you are brand new to M1 Finance and this will be your first portfolio, this will take up 100% of your overall portfolio. But as you add more of these slices into your overall M1 Finance, that percentage has to change. And I'm gonna show you here back at the main account here for us on M1 Finance. Let's load up here. So these are all my slices. So let's pretend this one was the food option that we just created. Well, if we added it to our portfolio, See here, this is 29%. So the first one you add in will be 100%, but the second one you add in has to at minimum be 1% and the other one has to be 99%. But ideally you wanna have a more reasonable percentage for each section that you have. So you can see here that my actual growth section takes up about 29%, that's my target. It's way above it for now. My retail, I would like at 23%. My tech section, I would like at 22, finance and so forth you can see all the different percentages. So as you keep adding more slices in, you're gonna to have to change those percentages similar to when you saw those three stocks that we were adding in and you had to get it to 100. Same thing when you add the overall uh, slices right over here into your portfolio time and time again, because you're gonna to have to keep it at 100%. All right, so next up, I'm gonna actually show you how to move your stocks from one slice to another. So let's go ahead and say that we wanna move our Airbnb stock from our real estate section all the way to our growth section. Maybe we just prefer it to be in there. So what we can do is click on real estate. Right over here, you're gonna see where it says the edit button. We click on here and then we choose the stock that we want to go ahead and move. So we'll check box this and you'll see this option right here that says move. So when we click on here, it's gonna tell us uh, right over here, it says choose your options. If, uh, if what you're moving already exists in the new pie, we'll combine the values because you can have the same stock in multiple pies. But we can go ahead and click on growth right over here. And then you can see it says now set the target percentage for each slice, just like we did earlier as well. So if we're gonna be adding Airbnb here, we have to go ahead and move whatever percentage away from the other stocks. So if we do you know, 12% here, we have to take 12% away from the other stocks as well. You can also hit the equalizer button here as well, which will actually break everything down as closely even as possible. Obviously, uh, if it's you know certain numbers that don't divide properly, it'll just give one stock a higher percentage than the others. Now, if everything there looks good, you can of course hit that continue button once uh, those percentages are uh, fully optimized right there for the uh, 100%. You can click on continue and then it goes ahead and it says your slice, uh, your slices came from this pie. You can keep editing and recalibrating its target, which won't sell share. So that's something to also keep in mind that will go through that process to be able to uh, change it. This is now going to be where we have to add 70% to this total to be 100% because this now will be the only stock. This will get all, of course, 100% of the target here. But again, we can go whichever way we want, hit continue, and then have those funds transferred at the next available opportunity. Now we're back here at the research tab because I mentioned earlier that there's a section called expert pies. So I do wanna break this down just a little bit when it comes to expert pies. This is a great way for a lot of people who are not big into picking stocks and wanting to go through the individual companies that are available. And they just say, hey, I have a certain criteria that I wanna hit 
and I just want to just go with it. And this is allowing you to do just that. So you can see here, there's a couple different options for us. We have general investing. We have planning for retirement, responsible investing, which is great. You can read a little bit more about that if you like. Income earner, hedge fund follower, and then just stocks and bonds if you wanted to. So as an example, if you want to do general investing, you can click on view pies. And what this does here for you, it gives you some different options that you can choose from. So you can do ultra conservative all the way to ultra aggressive and everything in between. Kind of gives you a little bit of a breakdown and like the risk tolerance that you would have with these. So if you're somebody who's like, hey, I'm a moderately aggressive investor, you can click on this option. So if we click here, it will actually go ahead and show you the performance over a certain period of time. So like three, five, three to five years, even a year if you want to. If you scroll down, it'll actually show you the companies or ETFs uh, that are in this fund. If these look good for you, you can actually click on add to portfolio. Now, remember what I mentioned earlier that as you add slices into your pie, you have to adjust back to 100. Well, check this out. We have our growth and our retail and everything else, but because we would wanna be adding this moderately aggressive uh, expert pie, we actually have to lose 1% from somewhere else at minimum. Right over here, you can see my moderately aggressive. If I wanna put this at 10% of my portfolio, I have to remove 10% from everything else. I can choose from one section or I can do a little bit from each one and get that to that 10% and that will add to my portfolio. So let's go ahead and just kind of drop those numbers. Oops, dropped it a little too high. And then that would put it back to 100%, which then I can continue here and it would add this expert pie in. Now going back to the expert pies, you can check out the other different options available, such as that responsible investing. You can see here, uh, responsible investing on here. It tells you kind of what they're doing here and what their goals are, if there's any expense ratios, uh, dividends that you can get from that and what they are invested in, as well as again, the income earner side, the hedge fund followers, you can follow these different companies uh, or different types of investors that are available for you. But again, this is just a great option for those who don't want to do individual stocks, which if you are somebody who wants to check out the stocks we were looking at earlier here in the stock section, we talked about the filters and you can even do by sectors as well too. And you can check out these different companies based off market cap at first, but you can also do dividends. You can do your price history by one, two or five years, and you can even go by PE ratio as well too. So that can help you find the companies that you're looking for right on M1 Finance. If you click on a company, and you are interested in them but don't want to invest in them just yet, you can click on the watch and it'll add them to your watch list so you can go back in and check them out again, see how they're have they been doing and if you actually want to add them into your portfolio as well. So earlier we were talking about percentages when it comes to your target percentage and you're gonna see here on the portfolio, this is the main portfolio, there is target and then there's an actual. And you can see the target for our growth as an example was 29% but the actual is 29.7%. So what does this actually mean and how does it affect the portfolio? Well, this is what's really great about M1 Finance. It allows you to actually manage your portfolio without having to pay attention to it on a regular basis. You could just have your deposits going in automatically and it will have this all taken care of for you. So the best way to kind of look this over is to consider this to kind of be almost like your cap on how much you want that money to go into this specific pie and you know how much for each individual stock. So we're gonna show you an example. So this is over obviously the target that we want because it's at 29.7 and that's partially on my own end because I've been doing some manual buys. But if M1 Finance was doing all the investing for me, it would actually not be investing in any of the stocks in this sector because it was actually over the target that I would want. Now I can change that at any time, like I mentioned before. So if I want it to be higher or lower, I can go ahead and do that. It doesn't affect anything instantaneously, but it will affect it down the road with deposits or earnings with dividends and such like that. So what we wanna do is actually look at all the different targets uh, that we have and consider them with our actuals. And if we need to do any adjustments, we can definitely do that. We can click on the edit button right over here and it takes us into the sector that we've seen before where we can go ahead and edit these based off of our percentages. We can do it manually like this or we can go ahead and just type in uh, whatever number we want as well. Now, I didn't actually change any of the numbers here on ours, but let's go ahead and go into the growth pie and slice right over here and kind of take a look and see how this works on an individual uh, slice by itself. So this slice takes about 29% of our overall deposits or our overall portfolio, I should say. And you can see here for each stock, I actually have its own target, which is 32%, 24, 20, and 24% again. Now what this means is again, with money coming into the overall account, once it gets dispersed into the available uh, slices, then it gets split up into the stocks that are in here. 
And all that truly means, so I don't confuse anybody, all that truly means is that without you having to worry about it, when one of your stocks is under the target, which would be, for example, uh, this one right here, so with Tesla, uh, right now it's at 19.5 for my actual, but my target was 24%, which means that if any money comes into this slice of my portfolio, Tesla's gonna get the majority of the funds that are coming in here because it's under in comparison to the rest of the stocks in here. And that's actually a good thing because it helps make sure that it manages everything for you. So not one stock becomes too much into your portfolio because a good rule of thumb usually for most investors is not to have more than 10% into one stock. Obviously that's up to your own discretion. Definitely talk to an investing advisor for that kind of information. But as that example goes, that is gonna be allowed for you. So. If we go back to our main portfolio section here, to give you context, right now, our target for our financial section is gonna be 11%, but it's at 9.9. .9, so it's about 1% lower than where I would ideally like it to be. So if I make a deposit into this portfolio, this slice of my portfolio is probably gonna get the majority of the funds that are in there. So let's say we put in 100 bucks, probably because of that 1% difference, all $100 might go into this one section. Now, I have four stocks in here, so how does it choose which stocks it gets? Well, again, now we can break this down from all of these different targets that we're looking at. So you can see here that my actual for Visa is 15%, but my target is 20. So there's a good chance that it'll go in here. For Ally, it's actually over by over 1%, so most likely it won't go in. You can see here for Discover, it's actually uh, quite a bit over, so it won't go in there and Square is actually down by almost 2%. So there's a good chance that that money will get split between Square and Visa. Well, I guess it's called Block, sorry. So most likely that these two companies, Block and Visa, are gonna get a majority of that $100. Sometimes it can be split pretty evenly, but from the looks of it, it looks like Visa would get a majority and then Square would get a little bit of the leftovers. So that way, all of these numbers balance back out to their close actuals. So that way it helps keep everything balanced for you. And again, this actually works really well for those that don't actually wanna to pay too much attention to investing because if a stock is going up really high and another stock of yours is maybe a little lower, uh, it'll actually invest in the one that's a little bit lower, which is sometimes a good thing to do. If it's down a little bit, then it's averages. Now, one of my favorite things about M1 Finance is actually the fact that you can be buying into stocks or ETFs at a fractional share. Now, what this actually means is instead of paying the actual face value of a stock, you can actually put in a dollar amount and buy in at smaller prep fractions of the stock. And I'm gonna show you here if we go into our holdings, and I'm gonna show you right here, the very top one is Microsoft, very popular company. And you can see here, we don't own just 31 or 32 shares, we actually own 31.98 and some numbers, right? And what that means is that every time I put in money into the stock, I'm owning just a little bit more of this company instead of having to pay the full face value. Now, if we actually go in, I'm gonna go back into Microsoft themselves since that's the company we're looking in. And I'm gonna show you on this main page of just Microsoft. Right now, they are priced at $265.23. So on some platforms, you have to pay that full amount or you know within a small range of that if you wanna own one share and that's all you can do. To be able to at least own one share, you have to do that. With M1 Finance, if I put $26 into this account, $26.50, let's say, I will own 10% of one share, which would be 0 0.10 shares. And so that would accumulate on here, right there it would be, instead of the nine, it'd be the 0 0.10. And that's how I would add to my share. So over time, I would build up on this portfolio instead of having to spend all $265, which if you wanted to, you can. And I'll show you how to do manual buys so you can get close to that one share if you want to. But also too, if you wanna just be able to buy in at $20 a week or whatever amount for each stock, you can do that and it'll just build up your portfolio and it'll really help you out to be able to have ownership of companies that maybe are out of reach because of the price point of the stock. The price point of the stock won't actually matter anymore. What really truly matters is just the value of the company. If you find it valuable, if all the numbers look great, then you can go ahead and be buying in no matter whatever the price point is because you can buy into with fractional shares. Now, because we're here on the Microsoft page, I do wanna do a quick breakdown of the individual stocks that you already own and what they look like when you're on this page. So the great thing is, you're gonna see a couple in pieces of information here. So the current value, this is what it's actually worth if you were to sell instantaneously right now, that's what you'd be getting. It tells you since you've been starting to invest with this company, 
for me, this is back in uh, June of 2019. Uh, you can see right here, the uh, net cash flow is how much money you've put into the company. Uh, value drift right here is that uh, percentage of the actual and the target. So that'll show you dollar wise how much you're off for each company. And then you can see here, there's a couple uh, different pieces of information. You'll see the gains. Uh, and right now we're actually targeted with uh, or toggled with on all. And you can switch through this and actually see the different changes, which is amazing. So you can see our overall gains on this company are $518, which is a 20% return. And the reason they do this is because they do the market gains, which is $422. And also the earned dividends are accounted for because that's actually money that you got and got value out of this share, the, the company that you own. So I've earned about $96.07 with Microsoft. Now, if I toggle over here to, let's say the one year marker, these numbers are gonna change. Now it's currently in the red because the market has gone down, but you can see it's currently in the red. If we go to the quarter, uh, you can see those numbers changing. Same thing with the month. You can see these numbers constantly changing as well as the actual uh, map over here uh, for the graph, I should say. I'm not even in here. I've been out of the screen for a while. No problem though. Uh, but you can see this right over here changing back and forth. I was looking at the camera while I was doing that. So now I can actually look at the camera and it has meaning. So if we go back to like the all time, you can see the graph starting off when, when I did the first investment and then as it's continued to grow, so I can kind of hover over and it changes with the, uh, the toggle that I have right over here. Um, if I scroll down here, you're gonna see the amount of shares that I have with the company. Obviously with Microsoft, we went over with the fractional shares. I have 31.98507 shares. So as I keep putting in even $20 at a time or 20, or $200 at a time, it's still gonna be buying in whatever dollar amount I'm having for that stock price. You can see how much I've put into the company. Um, if it is available for margin, which is borrow, which we'll be talking about here in a little bit, and the maintenance to be able to use that money for borrow. So again, we'll go over all of that stuff when it comes time for it. Now there's a little bit of information like the PE ratio, the dividend yield. I do again, recommend getting this information outside of M1 Finance if you wanna be very accurate with these numbers as sometimes this data takes a little bit more time to update. This is the daily change. So this is the last known change in the market for this stock in particular. Um, and you can see the last time that date or that has changed. So for the weekend or if it was during the actual opening of the market. So let's go ahead and show you how to do your first deposit on M1 Finance. now. Obviously at this point we had made our slice, uh, hopefully maybe even multiple slices and we wanna go ahead and do our first deposit. So what we wanna do is click on our transfer tab right over here. And so once we do that, it's gonna take us into the section that uh, says move money. Uh, so there's a couple different options. So we have our one-time transfer. So if you just wanna do a one-time, you can do that. You can obviously do your uh, recurring transfers. So highly recommended if you're getting paid every like two weeks and you wanna be consistent, this is a great way to go. Over here, we have what they call smart transfers. This is for M1 Plus users. So again, if you have that um, additional feature, this allows you to move money a little bit more fluidly uh, between your M1 finance, your spend, and even your borrow. Then you also have an option to transfer from another brokerage, whether it's a 401k with a company, or maybe you open up an account with like Robinhood or Webull or somebody else, and you wanna transfer it over, this is gonna give you that option. And then you also do, just as an example, have some spend options here. You can also send a check. Uh, this is with M1 Plus, and then you can also do direct deposits. You can have your money coming into M1 Spend to then go ahead and transfer over to M1 Invest and have that money be invested into your account. So the option we're gonna be doing today is our one-time uh, cash transfer uh, as this example. So then what we're gonna do is we have the option right over here. So we have a from and then the to and then the amount. So pretty basic on here, right? So we're gonna click here. Our external is where we wanna pull the money from. So we're gonna pull from our Capital One account and we want it to go into our dividend account, which is what I call mine account, my account, but you can name yours whatever you want. So you can see it said invest, and then we can enter the amount that we want. So the lowest amount we can put in is $10, uh, but for this example here today, we're gonna put in $200, and I wanna show you kind of how it breaks down into the portfolio, so you can see and understand how those target percentages work like we talked about earlier. So we're gonna go ahead and click continue. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is that the transfer is usually uh, complete by the next business day, but the money that you want to have transferred, as long as it's in before our trade windows, which we'll talk about here too, 
that will go ahead and be available for you to utilize right away. So essentially they give you a credit to be able to use and then they'll pull that money from your bank to be able to go in. So we're gonna click continue. Gonna verify everything here for you. If it looks good, we'll hit continue or confirm, I should say. And it says that your transfer has been created. Obviously it's currently pending. And then because we have auto invest on, which we'll break down here in a little bit, um, our event is actually gonna pretty much happen instantaneously for us without us having to do much ourselves. So we're gonna click on done. Now back here on the main page, you can see where it says buying power. This is now available money for you to go ahead and have ready to be able to invest. Now, because we have auto invest on, it's gonna do pretty much most of the work for us. And I'm gonna kind of do these next two sections kind of together because it is actually a two in one kind of feature for the most part. Auto Invest essentially just lets you invest your money, you can see right here, to automatically go into your investments once you hit over $25 in your buying power. So what that effectively means is that M1 Finance will just do the work for you to continue to build and invest your money. This really helps with compounding because if you earn dividends, you're gonna have that money go into your account and then have it reinvested. And that's a very powerful thing. Now you can also limit the uh, balance minimum. So if you want it to be a little bit higher, you can. So being at $0 means everything over 25 bucks just gets invested automatically. But if I wanted it to be a $100 minimum balance, because maybe I wanna keep money in here and have it grow, I can update that. But for most people, having it at $0 is probably the best option to have your money working for you and be reinvested. Now, because we have auto invest turned on, which you can toggle off if you want to, we're gonna scroll down here and you're gonna see two things. Now, you're gonna see a pending transfer. This is gonna be that transfer we just set up, which you can of course click on view details to cancel. It'll be very easy to do. And next up here, you can see upcoming trades. And right now it shows that we have two buys. So if we click on view details, um, it's gonna show you a couple different things in this section here. So let's break this down a little bit. So it says your next trading window, and you can see here it says morning at 6.30 a.m. tomorrow. Because of my time zone, that's the time it's gonna go into effect, which is going to be the um, New York time or the East Coast time of when the market actually opens, which is gonna be 9.30 a.m. You also see an option here that says afternoon, and that's gonna be 12 p.m. tomorrow. Um, that is gonna be exclusively for M1 Plus users. And I'm gonna break this down a little bit more in just a sec. So you can see here, our actual buys are gonna be two stocks in the portfolio. And if you remember earlier, or if you hopefully didn't skip over, you're gonna see that uh, the two companies that we were talking about earlier in our financial sector are gonna be the ones that are getting invested in currently automatically for us. We didn't do anything on our own. It just did this automatically for us. There are ways you can change this and I'll show you how to do that. So right now with Visa, uh, Visa is actually gonna get $113.29 and Block is gonna get about $86.71. Now these are estimates and these can change a little bit based off of how the market is when it opens, as well as just a couple other little factors. So usually it's not gonna be too big of a difference, but sometimes it could be a few pennies, sometimes it could be a few dollars um, on there. Now you can see a section here that says sell. So if you sold something, that's where that would be, just to kind of give you a bigger breakdown of this whole section. Now, if this is something you're like, oh, that works, it's great, my money will just do the thing it needs to do, M1 Finance will take care of everything, great. Now, because again, that percentage is so different here, that's why it's changing up and putting everything into our financial sector is because we're down by 1%. If I changed it and moved my growth sector right over here, oops, actually added to my growth sector and took away from finance, I'm gonna show you how this actually changes things up on M1 Finance for us. I'm gonna refresh. So now if you actually look at my financial slice here, I, I changed it to 10%, so it's only up by 0.1. Uh, or down by 0.1. And then you can see my actual growth sector or slice is actually down in comparison to where my target is. So if I go into my upcoming and view details, you can see this has actually now changed the dynamics a little bit here. Actually, all of these companies are different. So you can see here, Apple is at $154.35, Tesla is at $28, and Microsoft would be at $17. So that's how it changes based off of the percentages. And you can see here, my tech sector is now the, uh, the lowest when it comes to being closest to its target because it's at 0.4% difference, and this is at 0.3% difference. That's why this sector is getting the most money out of that $200, and it's just allowing it to go automatically. And one of the other things I wanna talk about when it comes to the target percentages, when you change those without any deposits or anything else, nothing gets sold, nothing gets bought, everything just stays the same again until a deposit comes in 
or something else changes with like maybe dividends earned and then that money goes in. That's when things will change when it comes to how the money is getting deposited. Usually the company with the lowest difference or the highest difference is the one that gets the most attention, which again is gonna be the tech slice. And then inside of the tech slice, of course, you saw Apple getting the most because Apple is half a percent away from the target and Microsoft is up pretty much half a percent from its target. And that's why those percentages are working to get those trade-ins the way they are. Now we talked a little bit about trade window um, and right over here, you can actually also see it on screen where it says trade window. You saw that 6.30 a.m. and then the 12. And again, the 12 does require an M1 Plus uh, benefit to be able to actually go through and get that feature. If you don't have M1 uh, Plus, you are only gonna have access to the morning, which is for most people totally okay. You're not trying to time the market. You're not trying to get things at a, a, a certain price point. You're just trying to invest for the long term. And honestly, that's great for most investors if that's not something you absolutely need to invest into the afternoon. Now, the other option right over here, you can see at the bottom, it says trade preference. If you have M1 Plus, maybe you prefer to just have any trade window, or maybe you say, hey, I only want the morning or I only want the afternoon. You can choose those options as well. So it gives you a little bit more flexibility with your investing if you so choose to do that. But again, if all you have access to is the morning, you're gonna be perfectly fine if you're investing for the long term. Now, with that $200 deposit, let's go ahead and say that you want to go ahead and do manual buys into your portfolio. Maybe there's a certain stock or a sector that you really want this money to go into. Well, you can do manual buys. You can either put that money into a slice in one of these slices, or again, you could buy into individual stocks. So first, let's go ahead and show you how to buy into a slice. So let's go ahead and say, I wanna put it into my growth sector here. So if I go into my growth, there's gonna be an option here that says buy and sell. So if I click on buy and sell, this is gonna show me right over here my money to be able to go ahead and go through this process. So at the bottom here, you can see my buying power is $200 and a penny. So if I put all $200 and a penny in here, you're gonna see it's gonna have my total buys. I'm gonna hit continue. And it's gonna tell me, hey, tomorrow morning, that's when it's gonna take place. So I hit confirm buy. And now what it's gonna do is something a little different from earlier because I'm doing more of a manual buy, not directly manual, but a little bit of a more manual buy. So it's all $200 is gonna go into this slice. Now, because Tesla is way under uh, weighted, it's gonna all go into Tesla right over here. So you can see that money going directly into Tesla. But if I adjusted Tesla, let's say, let me lower this down and let's increase Meta and some of these other companies. So let me just quickly do an adjustment here, go back into my growth. And so now with these percentages being a little different, you can see now I have two buys. So now I have Google and Tesla getting deposits. Now you can see Google is now well underrated, so it's getting the majority, and Tesla is getting a little bit less uh, in comparison. And I can, again, adjust those if I needed to. But let's go ahead and cancel this, which by the way is up here, you can see it's pending. So I can hit cancel, so I can cancel my order. Now let's say I wanna buy a little bit into Google but a little bit into Apple. Like those are the only two companies I wanna invest in. And so what I can do is I can go into Google separately. And now you can see the buy and sell section just for Google. And it's gonna load up here. And let's say I wanna do 125.01 into app or into Google Alphabet. So we're gonna confirm and buy here. And we're gonna click done. And then we're gonna go back to our main page. And then we're gonna go into our tech here. And then I also wanna buy into Apple. So I'm gonna do the same thing here. And obviously what's left over is $75. So I'm gonna do 75. And again, you can choose whatever dollar amount that you have that you're depositing. If you wanna do a little bit into each company, you can also do that too. These are just manual buys. This is not something you have to do. Uh, this is only if you want to go ahead and go through this process. So now if I go to my upcoming trades, you're gonna see right over here, it has the manual buys. It actually shows it twice because uh, it'll show you your manual options and then it'll show you everything else after. So. Maybe I didn't put all 125 into Google. It would take some of that money and then invest into the, everything else as it would be automatically invested. So you can see how it's split up in between these two companies here. And those are my manual buys. I can cancel them if I want to. And I'll show you here. If I do cancel here, it's gonna take the rest of that money and invest with other companies. You can see here, it's gonna put the rest into Apple and then some into Microsoft as well. Again, going back to the auto investing feature that it has on right now. Now, if we go back to our transfers tab right over here, let's go ahead and talk about recurring transfers and show you some of the different options with recurring transfers. So if we click on the from, we're gonna go back to, into our Capital One account. And uh, two, we're gonna invest into our investing account. And then this is gonna be how much we wanna invest every time we're investing. So let's say every two weeks you can put in a hundred bucks. Great, that's fantastic. Hey, if you can only do 10 bucks, I would still recommend doing the $10. You can see right over here, frequency, 
is weekly, bi-weekly, monthly, or week uh, of the month. So if we go here, you can select whichever week, the first, second, third, or fourth week, and then whatever day of that week we want. So if we want the second Wednesday of every month, we're gonna go ahead and have that do it automatically for us. If you wanna go ahead and do bi-weekly because you get paid every two weeks, you can do Friday, and you can do starting this week, and then it's gonna go ahead and start investing for you every single Friday, uh, or this actually is every other Friday automatically for you with that $100. Or, hey, again, if you could only just do 10 bucks, I highly recommend just getting started even with that $10. And the reason I mentioned $10 even as a minimum is because that's actually how I started this portfolio uh, with its original investment. So over here, you're gonna see an activities tab. So we're gonna learn a little bit more about activities. And this is gonna be showing you when you do deposits, uh, when stock splits happen, if you sell anything, this is pretty much just gonna be your like, you know, transactions that you're having going on in your portfolio. And I'm gonna show you here, if I switch over to the beginning of my portfolio, I had to put $100 in at the beginning, but then I started doing like $20 a week, or yeah, I think it was like a week, $10 a week, $10 a week, $10 a week, and that helped me get started with my portfolio. So just something to keep in mind when getting started, I just wanted to show that part. So what happens here is if I do a deposit, so you can see here we did $800 deposit, and then it shows you that trade that we did, which was in the morning, it did 12 buys. So if we click on here, it'll show you how it's split up. Now I did these manually, that's why everything is always with a zero zero at the end of it. But again, if you wanna do things automatic, it'll just show you and it'll add this all up here for you. So you can see our 12 buys, we did like Home Depot, Tesla, Microsoft, Airbnb, Amazon, Costco, all of those automatically got these investments put into them based off of what I wanted with the manual purchase that I did. And the great thing is if you actually click on these companies like Home Depot, for example, it'll tell you the amount that you put in, the date, the share price at the time that it purchased in, and then the amount that you got out of this. And remember, we talked about fractional shares earlier, right? So you can see here with $75, I effectively bought 25% of a share. So if, you know, I couldn't spend $300 at this given time for this one company, but I wanted to buy a little bit of it, I was able to buy 25%. That is fantastic and that is a great way to build up a portfolio so that way you can start getting value on the growth, the dividends, and everything else in between. Now next up, I wanna go ahead and show you the holdings page, which is gonna be the next tab right over. Now the holdings page here has some great information for you. So right here, it's gonna show you how many positions you have in your portfolio. So you can see ours is 17. And it shows you the cost basis. This is how much you've actually put into the portfolio. This shows you the current value of your portfolio. Again, we're in a downward market, so we are actually having unrealized gains of about $2,000, which is about 2.54%. Now that's obviously unrealized, and the reason this is actually a different number than what we saw earlier, which was a positive green, is because this number does not account for two really important factors that most people sometimes don't pay attention to with their portfolio. That is the dividends that they actually earn for holding these companies, which is big, and then also any sales that they do that are either positive or negative are also accounted for in that original number. I'll, I'll go back and show you here in just a second. So that helps kind of give you better management of understanding how much you've actually earned in your portfolio as a whole for holding these companies, maybe selling some companies, maybe earning some dividends and so on and so forth. So let me go back to the main portfolio for just a sec. So in our all time, we've actually gained $882. That's a lot from the dividends and also some companies I sold that I don't own anymore, but I made a nice profit from. Maybe I earned like two, three hundred dollars from them for holding. And when I sold them, that two, three hundred dollars is still accounted for in this grand total, which I love. I want to see my overall gains in my portfolio in its lifetime. If I lost money for selling a company, that will also be in my overall gains in its entire lifetime. But the unrealized gains, which is what a lot of people look for, is still here for you just in case you need that information. Now here is a more open spreadsheet of your overall portfolio versus having those individual slices and having to go into them. So here you can see the actual companies you have with their logos, the amount of shares that you have, the average price, the cost basis, which you put in, maintenance for the M1 borrow, which we'll talk about here in a little bit, unrealized gains for that stock individually, and then the current value of it. Now, right now, this is what is toggling this overall list. So what you can actually do is toggle back and forth with each one, so the values toggle. You can also do the unrealized gains toggle so you can see your best performer, or you can toggle again and swap it down to the bottom with your worst performing. You can also do cost basis, average price, and you can even do shares right over here so you can see companies that you have the most shares with, 
and then toggle again, but you can also just scroll if you wanted to. So you can see all the companies here in one nice overview so you can get a good idea of where you are with your portfolio as a whole. Now the next tab over here is gonna be your funding history. And this is just gonna give you a nice breakdown of how you're investing your money and where you're putting it in. So you can see early on, we started with small amounts, started putting in more here uh, in 2020. Uh, that's gonna be the deposits. This is gonna be withdraws, but this also includes M1 borrow. So if you pull money to borrow, this will also be accounted for. Uh, then 2021 and then 2022. And you can see here, those are gonna be the indicators for you if you do forget. Now, jumping back over to the activities tab, one thing we wanna talk about a little bit is dividends. I mentioned them earlier. It tracks how much you've earned in dividends in the entirety of your portfolio or in the time tabs. If you look at like the quarter or the month or the year, how much you've earned in dividends. Uh, but the nice thing is you can actually go into your activities tab, uh, tab over here, and you can actually break things down uh, just by trades, dividends, uh, deposits, withdrawals, cash movements, all these different things. But if we just click on dividends only, this actually allows us to see dividends. And the thing I really wanted to talk about with dividends is something really cool, is uh, fractional shares allowed us to buy companies at fractional amounts, but that also means we get paid out in fractional dividends. Now, if you're not too familiar with dividends, highly recommend watching some videos on YouTube about dividends and what they actually mean. But if you are somebody who's getting paid out dividends, what this is gonna do for you is get paid out in those fractional pieces. Now you see a bunch of different companies and a bunch of numbers. So this is the date that the company got paid out from, this is who paid out, and this is the total amount that we got paid. This is money that goes into our buying power that we can go ahead and turn around and invest with automatically, or we can withdraw it, we can move it to our spend account, we can do whatever we want. It's pretty much our money that we earn for holding these companies. Super simplistic, basic information of how a dividend is. So right over here, um, you can see this one was $18.97. Now, if you have auto investments on, that's unfortunately not gonna hit the threshold of $25, but if you added, you know, the last two dividends together, so the uh, 1897 and the 1515, that would equal over $25. That money would then automatically be reinvested in your portfolio and that's compounding a lot of your money and being very powerful. And then if you have companies like this one over here where it got paid out $35, that would just get automatically invested back into your portfolio as well. Now, these companies, uh, because the way this works, it won't be reinvested necessarily back into the companies that paid out the dividends. It will go into those companies based off of the target percentages, which again, can be a great thing for a lot of investors because it's gonna help you get the most value out of the companies that are the lowest percentage of your actuals versus your target. Now, depending on the investor, that might be a great thing. Other investors prefer to have that money go back into the companies that paid out the dividend. If you want that to happen, you can just do the manual buys like we showed earlier, or you can just let M1 Finance do its thing and take care of you so that way you don't have to worry about a single thing. Now, here's an example with like Home Depot. We got paid out $42 in Home Depot dividends, which is a beautiful thing, but we don't own exact numbers of Home Depot. It's not like 24 shares or 25 shares. We own something right in between those two numbers. Now, the nice thing is we still get paid out based off of how many shares we have, even the fractional portions of those shares into the dividends. So I wanna show you what it would be like to actually pay out those dividends, even in the fractional portion with Home Depot. So with Home Depot, we have 24 shares. So 24.27726, that's how many shares we have. And if they pay out $1.90 per share, we got paid out $46.12. So when that last payout was, I didn't own as many shares as I own today. But that 0.27726 of a share, if we times that by 1.90, we still made out 52 cents and some you know fractions there on that dividend. So we actually didn't miss out on having a fractional share. We get the fractional dividend with it, which is a beautiful thing. That way we can still be making our money even with fractional shares. Again, buying in at small amounts will still have an impact on us long-term. So let's talk a little bit about selling a share on M1 Finance. There's a couple different things you can do. Are you wanting to sell out of a company entirely? Maybe you wanna just sell a portion of the company because it's doing really, really well and you wanna gain a little bit of that gain. So what we wanna do is actually go in and show you some examples of how to sell. So if we wanna go into our growth section here, let's go ahead and say that we wanna go ahead and just sell a little bit of Tesla. They're at you know some highs and we wanna make some profit off of here because in our all time, we've actually are up $1,500. So what we can do is click on the buy sell option and then we're gonna tap over to sell. And then right over here, we're gonna go ahead and enter an amount. So let's say we wanna sell $500 worth. So 
we'll still be up a thousand dollars in gains because we're taking five hundred dollars now you can see here it says you had to update your uh investments to auto off since we're selling because for a majority of people you're just going to be having everything set in place and just be investing constantly selling is not really a common thing on m1 finance for most users because you are trying to just invest for the long term so the nice thing is you can just click on update and then toggle off auto invest and we're going to close that off and then now it's gonna go ahead and hit continue. So it's gonna give you some ideas here that uh, we already have $200 in transfers coming in because we did that earlier. We already did some buys manually. And then we're gonna add another $500 from Tesla. So we're gonna have $625 in buying power, give or take. So we're gonna click on continue. This is gonna tell us when it's gonna happen. So tomorrow at 6.30 a.m. We're gonna click on sell and click on done right here. And so you can see the pending sales gonna go through here. And if we wanna see this in a little bit more detail, we can go back to the main page, go to upcoming trades and hit view details. And you can see Tesla is gonna be sold right over here. Now we can do one of two things. We can automatically go through and manually spend that money if we want to, like we did earlier, or we can just let that money sit in our account and then we can turn auto invest back on. So then that money will go through and actually be invested in all the companies like it normally would with M1's auto invest feature. Now, if you're wanting to just sell out of a company entirely, what you can do then is go back into our growth. Let's say we, we do wanna sell Tesla entirely for someone to cancel this option here. And let's just say, hey, I'm done with Tesla. I don't need them anymore. I got what I needed out of them. Well, what you can do is click on the edit button right over here and you'll see all the stocks in this slice here. And we can click on Tesla and hit delete. So when we click delete, it's gonna say we need to add 21% back in to be able to go through this process. So let's just say Google, Amazon, and everybody else is just getting a little bit of the new slice. We're gonna click on continue. It's gonna ask us to confirm everything here for us. If it looks good, we're gonna click on confirm. And then right over here, we're gonna go back into our upcoming trades and then hit view details. Let me go ahead and refresh here. Now you can see over here on the right side, it's gonna say sell and it's gonna show you how much you're most likely gonna make. Keeping in mind that this is just an estimate. Now, if the market jumps up pretty exponentially up or down in the morning, that can have a pretty big change. But again, it's usually gonna just be a little bit of money in difference. And then you can see over here on the left-hand side, it's actually gonna take that money and invest it pretty much back into the stocks that are in that slice. So that way that percentage of the target for the growth stocks are gonna stay the same. And so you can see right over here, most of it's gonna go into Google, some into Meta and some into Amazon. I can adjust those percentages if I want to by going again back into my growth sector or slice. And you can adjust these as needed so that way those go back and forth in between. Now, if we wanna add Tesla back in and decide not to wanna sell before the morning bell, uh, we can go ahead and do that. This is also gonna be the same way to add a stock or ETF into a pie that already exists. So if you have you know, this slice here and you wanted to add Tesla, this will effectively be the same thing. We're in our growth. We're gonna click on edit. And here we're gonna go ahead and add a slice. So it's very similar to what we did earlier when we wanted to create a pie. So we're gonna go ahead and add Tesla. So we're gonna find them, click add to basket. And then again, my face is kind of covering it here. Um, we're gonna click on add. And it's gonna add Tesla back in here. And then we're gonna go ahead and put whatever percentage works best for us. I think, yeah, this is percentage wise, we'll go ahead and change later, but all this goes back to 100. So we can go ahead and click on continue, confirm everything looks good. And now that sale is gone. So we don't have to worry about that anymore. Tesla it won't be sold in the morning anymore. But again, if we wanted to, that is gonna be the process for selling a stock. Now, if we got some dividends paid out or maybe we sold some stocks and we wanna actually withdraw our money, uh, first, we wanna take a look at our current cash balance. This is the money that's available to withdraw. So you can see here right now, it just shows a penny. And the reason there's a difference between these two numbers right here, the buying power and the current uh, cash balance is this again is not money that is officially transferred yet. We did the transfer to buy in, but that money is not currently available in the account because it hasn't been fully pulled from your bank. But once it has, it'll go into your cash balance unless you spend it automatically, which most people will do. Um, but let's say you got some dividends that came in and or sold some stock and you wanna go ahead and uh, transfer out. So very similar to transferring in, you're gonna click on the transfer button and we're gonna do a one-time transfer and we're gonna go from, and this time we're actually gonna go to our investment portfolio and then we're gonna go to and then our personal account and then the amount that we wanna transfer out. 
Now, obviously, we don't have the money in here right now uh, to be able to transfer out because we just have a penny available. But let's go ahead and say we do want to actually just pull out 100 bucks for whatever reason. Um, it will actually go ahead and just start selling some of your shares in your companies to be able to pull out $100 for you. So that's actually a nice thing as well, too. You don't have to necessarily sell out $100 in one stock unless you want to. You can just let M1 Finance kind of just do it based off of whatever company is above its target price or its target percentage uh, to be able to withdraw. And if you wanted to, you can avoid that by switching over to M1 Borrow, which you can go ahead and do as well. And we'll talk about M1 Borrow here in just a moment. So if you wanna go ahead and cancel any transfers that you have coming in or going out, if you go to the pending transfers section right here, you can click on view details. And here you're gonna see all the details for the transfer and towards the bottom here, you can click on cancel. Now, obviously if it's already gone through, it won't let you cancel, but since it hasn't gone through yet, we can go ahead and do that cancellation. And now that is officially canceled for us. So we're gonna hit refresh on our page here. So next up, let's go ahead and talk about rebalancing after we canceled our transfer here. And rebalancing is right over here. We've kind of gone past it uh, with some of the other features, but we wanna talk about rebalancing. So if we click on here, it's going to give us a quick breakdown and I'll go into some more details. So it says during the next trade window, M1 will buy underweighted slices and sell overweighted slices to bring your pie back to its targets. You can learn more or let me just kind of break this down a little bit for you. So the way it'll work is right over here, it's going to look at which companies and slices are over and under. So as an example, our industries here is actually over because right now it's over by 0.2% from its target. So it will sell out of here and it will most likely buy into these other slices that are under. Same thing with our real estate. Our real estate is actually over by half a percent. So it'll sell out of these two and it'll buy into these slices over here based off of those target percentages and the actual percentages. Now there's two really important things to note. If you go through this rebalancing process and you have a taxable account, there will be a tax event that gets triggered. And what that means is because you're gonna be selling out of stocks, whether it's for a gain or a loss, that's gonna cause you to have some tax implications. Whether it's gonna be beneficial to you or potentially cost you some money, that's for you and a tax accountant to talk about, so make sure you talk to them. But if you have a retirement account, Roth or traditional or a rollover, this will actually not have any effect on you tax-wise. Again, also talk to a tax accountant, but because everything stays within the retirement account, the rebalancing will have a different effect on you than if it was a taxable account. So again, taxable account will have a tax event caused by rebalancing. A retirement account will not have an, a tax event effective for rebalancing. So it's a beneficial thing if you wanna rebalance in a retirement account. Now on M1 Finance, we wanna make sure that we have our account secure. So what we wanna do is obviously not just have a good security password, but we also wanna activate our two-factor authentication. So in order to do that, I'm gonna show you how to go to your settings. So here on the main page of M1 Finance, there's gonna be a section here that kind of shows your name and if you're an M1 Plus user, it'll be highlighted in gold. So we're gonna click on here and it's gonna show you a drop-down menu. Now in this drop-down menu, you're gonna see a couple different details here. Um, there's gonna be one option here that says view account settings. So we're gonna click on here. So as you can see here, we have a lot of new options available for us. So first is gonna be our portfolio and this is gonna be everything that we set up when we originally created our account. And you can see here, if you do need to change anything, you can contact support by clicking that button available for you. Then we have security payments documents. So our tax documents or our monthly statements, uh, accounts that we have available for us, and then any notifications we want to have. So if we click on security, so here you can change your password. So if you want to change your password, you have to enter your current one in, put in your new one and hit submit. But then you can also put in two factor authentication. You can have it toggled off or put on. Obviously you have to use companies like Google Authenticator or different types of authenticators out there. Now, if you wanna learn about that, I actually do have a separate video on how to go through that step-by-step step, uh, to be able to activate a two-factor authentication here on the YouTube channel. So next up, we wanna talk about M1 Borrow. Now, Borrow is gonna be a feature available for you, uh, whether you have M1 Plus or just the regular free account. So we're gonna click on Borrow. And this is gonna take us to a whole new page. Now, if you don't already have M1 Borrow, you're gonna see a page here that kind of gives you a breakdown of what the Borrow feature has, how much you need to have into your account, and what the current interest rate is, plus what the interest rate is for M1 Plus users. So you can see here for our account here, we don't currently have anything borrowed. Our base rate, because of interest rates being higher, is 4.25%. 
And this is gonna be our current available credit available for us to be able to pull out, which is $31,100. You can see here our activities. I have pulled money out before and I've paid it back. Uh, you can see our current limit here and how much we're using. We can click the borrow button and then we can also pay back. Now here's a really cool feature that they have available for us. If we click on borrow, it kind of take us to that one-time transfer page and you see the borrow option here. And then you can click on two, you can borrow into your uh, investing portfolio, which is a little bit riskier. So definitely keep that in mind and do some research if you decide to do that. But the really cool option is to actually withdraw into your personal account. So if for some reason, let's say you wanna do a big down payment on a house or a car, or maybe pay something up with a much higher interest rate, you can actually pull money out of your investments without selling your investments and utilizing that money and then paying it back as needed. So for example, let's say we wanna pull out $3,000, so you know 10% of the available money that we have. M1 will actually do a details page right here for you that will actually break things down for you, and I love this. It'll tell you what your rate is, an estimated amount that you would be paying every month. So to borrow $3,000 would be $10.63 a month that will be added to our overall balance that we can pay off every month or we can just pay off the total and then it accrues on a daily basis. So even if you want to pay it off right away or you know just borrow it for a couple of weeks, it'll still charge you on a daily rate. So this is the projected monthly so you can break that down you know per day if you wanted to. So if we $10.63 divided by you know average 30 days, that would be 35 cents every single day that would be accumulating on the account until we paid it back. Obviously we could pay it back in smaller increments and then it'll lower the amount that we have to pay because it's based off of whatever the amount is currently being borrowed at that given time. Now, one thing to note with M1 Borrow as well is that that interest rate can and will change based off of how the federal uh, rates are. So if it's going up, consider that the rates for M1 are gonna go up, but if the federal rates go down, consider that those rates will probably go down as well. So definitely take some caution when it comes to using M1 Borrow, but it is an awesome feature and available for those who want to utilize that money for other types of investments or paying off other types of debts or doing essentially whatever they want with that money. Now, next up here is going to be the M1 spend section. So this is actually going to be effectively a bank account for you. So this is going to be an area where you can put money in. I think they call it money management technically. It is FDIC insured. So when you put your money in here, it is protected just like any other bank. They do have an interest rate for you. I believe at this current time of recording, it's like 1.7% interest. It does change with the federal rates as well. So it can move up and down for you. This is a very basic and simplistic kind of account. Uh, but the nice thing is it does show you your transactions. It shows you uh, any interest that you earn. Like last month we earned $53.93 for our account. Um, we can move money in and out of it. We also get a debit card with this that we can utilize anywhere else. And the cool thing is that debit card actually earns us 1% cash back. So the nice thing is it's putting money in, earning a little bit of interest, and then using that money at places that we need to utilize and getting 1% cash back. So if maybe you don't wanna use a credit card or anything else, you actually can still get some cash back for using that debit card. Now here's the uh, debit card itself. You can see we clicked on manage card. Uh, you can see the card itself. One of my favorite features that I love with cards is when they give you the option to be able to lock your card in online. So in case you lost it or don't wanna be spending the money, you can protect yourself just a little bit more. You can change your pin at any time. You can also report any issues like lost uh, or stolen or damaged. And then you can also see right over here your uh, limits as well. So your daily spending limits, your ATM limits, and then your uh, monthly ATM fee reimbursements. So you can actually get money back for utilizing the M1 uh, spend card. So that way, if you're using it at an ATM, you actually get reimbursed whatever fees up to four times every single month. The nice thing is as well too, you can actually create multiple accounts as well. So we have one right here, but you can add more accounts if you want to. If you wanna go through and open up a credit card with them, you can actually earn up to 10% cash back at select categories, which are usually stocks that are in the stock market and available for you, which is a cool feature for those that wanna earn a little bit more based off of the stocks that they own in their portfolio. Now I mentioned earlier that you could do direct deposits into M1 Finance. So you can see here, we're in the direct deposit. It will go into your M1 spend account first, so that way then you you can transfer it to your investments. It gives you your uh, routing number and your account number so you can utilize those. You can also download a voted check if needed for the company that you work with to have that direct deposit go in. 
Now, next up, I want to show you is the home page of M1 Finance. Uh, since we started off with invest first and foremost, uh, let's go ahead and click on here and show you what this looks like. So this is the home page of M1. So you can see right over here, it shows you your total net worth inside the M1 Finance portfolio because it adds up your assets, which are your investments, your spend account, and then it minuses it from your liabilities, which are from your borrow and if you have the M1 credit card. So it'll take all that into account to be able to show you what that net worth is right over there in real time all the time, which is a great way for you to kind of focus in and see where you are with your overall. If you want to keep your spend into a emergency fund, that's a great place to keep it, especially with a higher interest rate, and then see your investments in your portfolio all at the same time. So that way you can see your net worth and continue to grow it every single day. Day. Now, if you made it to this portion of the video, I really hope that you got a tremendous amount of value from going step by step on creating your account, understanding M1 Finance and breaking everything down pretty much to its most basic form. So that way you can get the most value to invest for the long term and build up your wealth. I mentioned earlier, if you don't already have M1 Finance, definitely check out the link in the show notes down below. That will get you started right away. Help out the channel so you get more content just like this. Now, if you already signed up for M1 Finance, but you still wanna support out the channel and got tons of value out of this video, consider hitting that thanks button down below and letting us know that you got that value out of this video here today. And I want you to keep on learning and growing when it comes to growing your wealth. So check out my video right over here to keep on doing that. My name is Dennis and I wanna help you in the next video.